Chemical bonding between atoms can get very complicated, but there are a few simple basics that are worth remembering. Previously, I talked about metals and non-metals. With bonding, we come back to those same two types of element, which make up most of the naturally occurring elements. First of all, the noble gases are non-metals, but they only form chemical bonds very rarely, so we'll park them to one side. They're not included in what follows. Metal atoms bond because their outer electrons delocalize and form an electrostatic glue around what's left of the atom, which is now a lattice of positive ions. Those electrons are free to move, which gives metals many of their physical properties. This type of bonding is called metallic bonding. Non-metals hold on tightly to their electrons and try to pull in electrons from their surroundings. When surrounded by other non-metal atoms, they end up sharing one or more electrons in a chemical bond. In that sharing, the bond gets equal numbers of electrons from each atom. Paired electrons do not bond, which helps explain noble gas unreactivity. This sharing is called a covalent bond. The bond is strong and can exist in all three phases, gas, liquid and solid. When metals react with non-metals, the valence electrons are transferred completely. The electrons are pulled in by the non-metal, the metal becomes a positive ion, and the non-metal becomes a negative ion. In the solid, a matrix of electrostatic attraction holds them together. This is an ionic bond. Charge is balanced across the structure. When molten or dissolved, the structure breaks apart into independent ions, so the ionic bonding only exists in the solid. So remember, metal to metal is metallic, non-metal to non-metal is covalent, metal to non-metal is ionic, and it gets much more complicated, but that's a pretty good starting point.